Clay Guida. Damn it. This is the Schmo with the pro, with the OG of the fight game, the former reality TV star. He started Bully Beatdown on MTV. He's the one and only Jason Mayhem Miller in the flesh here in Burbank in the eve before up next fighting 17. How we doing? Man, great. I, I got to say, man, this up next fighting, shout out to them. They really uh, have uh, exploded onto the LA scene and man, uh, they're doing a great job uh, providing some fights for some up and comers that are just, you know, next level, good production value, really great fights, you know, and I, I'm excited to see. A schmotastic invent indeed. They got four title fights, 17 total fights. They're doing big things over here. Yeah, I'm looking to see the next stars today or tomorrow. There it is. Talk to the schmo for a second, man. It's been quite some time since we last caught up. It's always great to see you. Great to see you too, bud. Uh, you know, I've been out of the scene for a while uh, for various reasons. One major one in particular. But, you know, I'm doing uh, really good and I feel like uh, a whirlwind of success coming my way. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you out here doing God's work, uh, interviewing the fighters. You, you're really uh, carved out a place in the algorithm, Schmo. I got to tell you. We appreciate that. What do you know about this algorithm, man? I, I mean, I know it's something. Maybe it's God, Jesus, Allah, some kind of weird uh, 3.147, some, some or another. I, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'll get back to you that uh, um, once I do some search engine optimization. There it is. Now, what are we doing these days, Mayhem? What's keeping you busy? Man, well, you know, I coach a lot. Uh, right now, my day is littered with uh, pro fighters in the morning and little kids in the evening. Uh, it's uh, really, a, you know, like uh, warms the cockles of my heart to see the little kids uh, uh really getting it, getting it. And I'm just talking about the pro fighters. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I finally earned my uh, place in the OG where I don't even understand the lingo out there. No cap. No cap. Yeah, no cap. I'm also involved at the merging veterans and pros dot org, which is, uh, you know, something to fill the gaps where the VA doesn't support our soldiers enough. And so we, you know, have a, a workout and as well as a, sort of a, I guess we would call it the huddle, you know, a, a kind of group therapy session for uh, veterans who have been to war or just have had some stress and drama from, you know, getting out of the Army or Marines or Air Force or Navy. And, uh, you know, they have an on-staff clinician. It, it's, it's, it's a really good program. It, it feels really good to do something positive with my life and give back to uh, those who serve our country and have uh, given so much for oftentimes so little. We love to hear it, Mayhem. Yeah. Doing big things. Now talk to the schmo for a second, man. All right. There's a UFC middleweight. He's a former champion. He goes by Sean Strickland. Tarzan. He wants an opportunity to fight for the title again. He recently lost it to Toronto against Rikas Duplessis, who is now the middleweight champion. What do you think should be next for Sean Strickland? Well, as I understand it, it was a very close fight and uh, kind of a lot of people had a lot of things to say about that fight where, you know, there was some unsettled business. Maybe the judges were on the take. I don't know. You know, uh, I think that that would be great. That would be fine in my opinion, for him to fight again for the title, but the UFC is going to UFC. And I think there's big money fights for Sean Strickland in other directions. Uh, there, there's some hot up and comers in there and some tough guys in that division. It's, it's one of the best divisions. I mean, UFC got a lot of good divisions, especially the lighter weights, but you know, 85 is one of those beastly divisions where you see a lot of knockouts, a lot of like uh, submissions, like uh, high, uh, percentage finish rate and so Sean Strickland is really a money fighter he's kind of our American McGregor over here you know with all his chatter so put him up there with some money fights you know the the title is one thing but I think the money is you know is where it's at these guys want to get paid they want to have a good career so you know give us give us some fun fights you know
Well, you're a boisterous guy. Do you see any Sean Strickland in yourself or some? Listen, uh, I, <laughs> you know, the, I, I see that. I, I see the comparison. Me and him are definitely cousins somewhere down the line, you know. But, um, you know, the, the, Sean is a very opinionated guy. And, you know, he's at, it seems like the height of his popularity. So he uses this as a soapbox to stand on to chatter about whatever the hell is on his mind. And so, I don't know. I don't know if he's running for governor of Nevada or something, but <laughs> he, he's doing something, that's for sure. He's got some uh, right-wing pundit in his blood. Well, there are some exciting fights coming up here. We got UFC 300 right around the corner. One of your favorite fighters, the Shimonos over the years, Justin Gagey. He's the BMF champion, Listen. man. He's fighting Max Holloway. That's going to be a banger. Dude, that right there is the most interesting fight on the card to me. I mean, I'm glad they put this BMF thing up there because those two guys are elite. Like, uh, as far as striking goes, just, uh, you know, the grappling is good. They they give the fans a fight. And so <sighs> that's so interesting to me. You know, I that one is the one that like, you could flip a coin. You know, I, I maybe, I don't know if the odds makers are giving a little slight edge to Gagey. Uh, you know, the McGregor loss uh, that um, that he under, uh, that the, uh, uh, what was his name? The, oh, geez. The, that fight gets me all frazzled because I love both those guys as fighters and I know that no one's coming out of there uh, uninjured. You know, that's going to be the, the toughest fight on the card. Uh, the rest of the card looks like kind of straightforward. Maybe there's a couple dogs that will win, but the Gagey fight, and man, these guys, I I'm looking forward to that one. Well, you're someone who's fought at welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight. If they heavyweight, too. And you heavyweight, too. I, I fought in an era where we could do freak show fights where I fought a man 400 pounds. Whew, that was a tough one. <laughs> well, the Schmo's going to ask you if they could make a one-of-a-kind belt that you could have fought over because they can make belts, I guess. What belt would Mayhem be fighting over? <laughs> the fucking drama-rama fight, I think. Uh, the drama-rama world champion, you know. I, I don't know, bud. You put me on the spot there. I, I, you know, I'm going to workshop that spitball a little bit. I, I got some comedy friends that can maybe make a better one. Okay. Let's talk about some unique events coming up, too. You got Mike Tyson, 57 years young, boxing Jake Paul. It's going to be over there in Dallas, Texas. It's going to be at a football stadium where the Cowboys play. What do you make of that matchup? And does Jake Paul got what it takes to knock out Iron Mike? Or do you think Iron Mike's going to be putting the kid on the canvas? You know, that's an interesting fight because, yeah, the age. The, the age is the big difference. I think if Mike gets out there early, he might be able to touch him up and send him to the canvas. But I don't know, man. The smart money is over there on uh, Jake Paul. Look, Jake Paul came up as an influencer, but he's proven himself to be one of the best boxers of our time. That's the reality of the situation. And whether we want to hear it as fight fans or not, the guy knows how to box. He's strong, and he picks good fights that he can more than likely win. So Jake Paul got an edge. I, I hope old Mike brings it to him. Who do you enjoy watching the most that the Schmo hasn't said yet? Is there a fighter out there that Mayhem Miller's keeping an eye on? Oh, but I mean, look, man, I, you know, I, I said it about Strickland, but really, I guess our McGregor here in America is turning into Sean O'Malley. This guy is, uh, ha says the funniest stuff in interviews, you know, or has like content uh, as we call it these days. You got content that just really, like, strikes a nerve with me. And uh, his fighting style is he just overloads people's circuits with all these feints and weird angles. And, I mean, he puts on a good show. You know, that fight against Cheeto really uh, was a big test for him, especially since, you know, he broke his foot and then lost that fight a long time ago. And so he just cleaned off the smudges on his record. And now he's just continuously dominating the uh, that division. <sighs> Man, I, I'm I'm really uh I was really pumped up to see that fight, and I'm really excited to see his next fight. You know, whatever it, whatever happens, I, I I hope that he gets paid for it, and I hope that he does really good in it. Who's on Mayhem Miller's Mount Rushmore of most entertaining fighters in combat sports history? You can include yourself, well, past and present. Yeah, I, man, entertaining wise, I mean, we got to go with me. Uh, I always put it all on the line, you know, every time. Uh, you know, but. And who else is on there? Uh, 
What's my favorite caveman from Chicago's name? Come on, you know. He, he always brings the thunder. Come on, lighter weight guy. Looks like Captain Caveman. Nothing? Come on, Schmo, help me out. Caveman buddy. from Chicago? Yeah. Uh, he fought Benson Henderson, and they just went ballistic for like 67 minutes, it felt like. Uh, Clay Guida. Damn it. Uh, you know, you put me on the spot here. If, if you email me this, I'll, I'll get back to you on Twitter. Oh, you're on the email now? I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if... And I you know, have... it's not Twitter anymore. It's X. Damn. What happened? What happened to the world? Elon Musk purchased that thing. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I hope he got a good deal. Did you, he? You tell the schmo. Did he get a good deal? I don't know, bud. I, I've been out of the world for a little while. I, I don't know what's going on in this planet. Uh, suddenly, everybody got an electric car. And, uh, you know, it's getting weird. It's getting weird out here. I, I need to fix my algorithm. What surprised you the most from being in this free land? Oh, man. <sighs> You know, the, everybody is, like, fired up against each other. I don't even get that. You guys are all listening to your own Facebook feed so hard that you forget that we're all in this together. Uh, now that I see that people are, you know, pissed off about everything, I, I don't even know who to be friends with. What team am I on? I'm wearing a blue shirt. Uh, can I get a red hat? Can I wear a red hat and a blue shirt at the same time? You know, nobody will let me be me. Uh, everybody has to uh, pick a team now. And I don't know which team to... Uh, I don't even want to pick a team. I just want to be an American. Then we're all white, baby. White flag. You're a neutral guy. You TikToking, by the way? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I played with the TikToks, but I haven't really got a hang of it yet. I'm trying to figure that out. It's like uh, a whole new, brand new world. I used to have a production team that did all that stuff. And now everybody and their brother is uh, giving their fight picks and now their uh, pontifications about how a boat crashed into a, you know, it, it's like, um, it used to be you got to get on uh, Fox News or CNN to be a pundit. But now we're all punditries. It, it's, it's a new era. And I'm getting used to it. Don't worry. I'll join, guys. I'll get normal and uh, talk to you on your phone all day but i'm still uh piecing my way through there yeah i'm just snaking snaking you gotta watch out for the mic yeah no Get stress right there. hypothetically speaking if gsp were to have fought khabib gsp was on kamar usman and henry cejudo's pound for pound podcast saying if he would have fought khabib he would have taken him down he thought he would win the fight obviously he would choose himself why wouldn't you who would you have in that fight? Uh, you know, Khabib is like a, another level grappler. It's hard to compare. What you got to understand is that all the fighters of today are standing on the backs of us OGs. All of our techniques and our mistakes and our, our, our uh, the development of the sport, it goes forward. You know, it goes up and up. So, yeah, maybe GSP would have found a way. But I think the variety of techniques and the new style of martial arts that's coming in is superior. I, I, you know, and I, I'm talking from somebody who's, you know, from the old school. I see what the training methods that I, that I impart on the fighters that I coach, it's updated. It has to be updated because this, this is an art form. It grows and morphs and changes. You know, a couple of years ago, we're not talking about calf kicks. And now, calf kicks are a normal thing. That never happened. If you watch UFC 1, Art Jimerson with one glove on would not have a chance with anybody in there, you know, it, uh, today. Even at a lighter weight because the techniques have advanced. The style has advanced. So, yeah, I think that if anybody could uh, have beat them throughout time, yeah, GSP the GOAT, he more than likely could figure out a way, but the different style and techniques and the evolution of the sport would favor Khabib. Can we get a final message for all the Mayhem Miller fans out there worldwide? Dude, monkeys are back in full force, you know? I, I really appreciate it, and I never believed in this uh, manifesting, uh, and I don't carry any uh, crystals, but you know, now that uh, I've changed my life and turned things over, 
good stuff keeps heaping back on me. So, you know, don't quit, kids. Don't quit. If uh, you're going through a tough time, look at me. You can make it right. There it is. You're looking good, Mayhem. Thanks, brother. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Burbank, California. We're out. All right. Boogers look good. Thanks.